Hello, Dustin here. Let's take a quick look at Windows Performance Monitor. To do that, we open our Start menu and start typing the word Performance and click on the link that comes up. In some versions of Windows, it will be called Reliability and Performance Monitor, but they're both the same tool. So let's maximize this and make sure we have Performance Monitor selected on the set. When it first opens, it instantly shows you the percentage of processor time that's being used in real time, and that gives us kind of a basic look at what this can do. You can click the plus sign at the top to add more counters, and there's a counter for generally about every statistic that you can think of, from services to USB to data caches, .NET, networking, SQL databases, just about anything you can think of is available to track. But tracking it on this real-time view is not really that impressive. I mean, it shows us what our computer is doing now, but how do we look at our computer over the long term? To do that, we'll need a data collector set. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this real-time view and start a new data collector set. To do that, we come down to the side. And for our scenario, I'm going to create a little scenario in which we need to analyze our server to see when the processor usage is low and the network usage is low so that we can receive backups over the network and neither our processor or our network will be overloaded. So once we have our data collector set opened, let's right click on user to find, click new, and then data collector set. Let's give it a name, we'll call it server test. Be sure and collect uh, manual or advanced information and performance counters are what we want for our log. Click next and it will allow us to add our information. We want to start out with processors so let's expand that out and show percentage of processor time. So you click add and we also mentioned we wanted to track our networking traffic. So let's go up to network interface, expand that out Select bytes total a second, which will average our sent and received, and add that as well. I'm going to click that again. This time I'm just going to add it specifically for one networking card, because these other cards aren't really in use, so I'll delete that, and now we're ready to go. So let's click OK and then we can click next to select a file location. I'll leave it on standard. Let's click finish and we have our set. Notice it's not actually started until you right click on it and click start. Only at that point does it begin collecting information. So while that works, I'll show you how to retrieve the data from one that I started earlier. And to do that, we come down to the reports tab. So let's open that up and then open up user defined and then backup test, which is generally the same test that I just created. We'll open up our report and notice that it only shows one graph at a time, so we'll need to click the plus sign and add the one that it's not showing, which in this case is our network. So let's go ahead and add that. And we have a graph of our networking time and usage versus our processor usage. Now this is a fairly short test, I just ran it for two or three minutes to give you a general idea of how to do this, but in the real world you'd want to run this for days if not a week to allow you to get a better example of what your processor is doing. So for our networking example, we would want to run our backup somewhere here or here when both the networking and processor are generally not being used. Now to stop a data collector set, you can right click on it and click stop and only then will you be allowed to look at the report that it's generated. So keep that in mind, you can't look at a set that's currently running. Also to change the set, you just double click on it when it's stopped and there you can change the interval and this is important because you don't really want a long term data collector set to be collecting data every 15 seconds, you probably want it to collect every so many minutes. Additionally, you can right click on it on the sidebar and select properties and from here you can change the file directory and create a schedule for when it runs or a stop condition such as when it has 
to run for a certain amount of time or collected a certain amount of megabytes of data. And this is important if you're worried about your uh, server storage space. So let's just leave that the way it is. And now you're pretty much prepared to run Windows Performance Monitor so that you can monitor your system and get a better experience by knowing what is going on behind Windows.